Welcome to church. There's just a few announcements I'd like to bring to your attention. First, a great big thank you to all who made the Hope drive through Turkey Supper work so well on Wednesday, November 4th. It was a great success. To all those who came in and cooked and made desserts the day before, those who came in and cooked and chopped carrots and uh, roasted turkeys and mashed and made potatoes and dressing and all those good things. We, give, we thank you so much. But we also thank you, all those from the community who came and the 300 people who bought tickets to have this uh, turkey supper. We really appreciate it and your support. As well, fun script orders are due today. Those are those gift cards. If you want to get gift cards for Christmas, I know my mother's doing some shopping with the gift cards. Uh, our summer camp program takes a small portion. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything, but the companies give us a portion of, of the profits towards us. So they are due today, and then also, again on December 6th, if you want to use them for Christmas gifts, and they'll be back the week later. So by the 13th, or even 12th, you should be able to get them back. Operation Christmas Child, the Samaritan Purse shoe boxes, are due today. Uh, get them in, get them packed, um, and uh, also either today or uh, we, well, they're going to be not taken in today. They'll be probably delivered tomorrow, but uh, get those into us today. That would be great. Not this coming Monday and Wednesday, but the week after, we have two official board meetings. On Monday at 7 p.m., November 16th, we have the Caro St. Andrews uh, official board meeting in their church hall. We'll be physically distanced, but bring a mask and uh, stay, and we'll have everybody physically apart in that meeting. Also, the following Wednesday, November 18th, 7 p.m. at Hope in the Sunday School Room, we'll also be physically distanced in family pods. Uh, bring masks, so in case we have to get closer together, we can do so safely. Also, White Gift Sunday is normally the first Sunday of Advent, which would be November 29th. But in this case, because of COVID, uh, they want uh, Christmas for Everyone wants their gifts in by November 22nd. Well, we collect them at the church on November 22nd to get them in that week. Uh, gift cards are, again, a wonderful idea for teens. So if you want to take advantage of our fun script order, uh, uh, do that uh, as soon as you can. Uh, that would be awesome. Also, Advent decorating. We have decided we are going to still try and decorate. We normally have a decorating party where everybody gets together, but for safety purposes, we are going to divide up the decoration, and if different family pods or circle groups would like to uh, decorate certain things, contact uh, Catherine Smith and we'll invite people to go in at separate times so they can safely decorate their aspects. So we're looking for people to do, I know we've got some, I think we've got people to do the windows, uh, put, who tend to do those windows every year. Uh, but if you are like to do that, please come and talk to Catherine Smith uh, and we'll organize times for people to go in safely and individually. And it needs to be done by Sunday, November 29th and we all can't go in on the 28th, so we'll have to get that done earlier. Advent Christmas decorating. Also, we want to be able to help people feel it, make it feel more like Christmas outside the church. So we've had some volunteers who are willing to make up some sort of uh, outdoor nativity scene. Now we have very limited place to put this, so they've got an idea where they can do it, but what we're looking for, if anyone has some leftover 3 8 plywood that's in decent shape that be, could, could be cut up and painted uh, for an outdoor nativity scene. If you have some, it'll save us buying it. And so talk to me if you have some extra 3 8 plywood. Also, uh, we are hoping to have a, our old-fashioned Christmas concert. Now, we can't invite everyone to the church. That's just not going to work. Instead, what we're hoping to do is to have a virtual community Christmas concert. So if you'd like to play music, sing a song, do a Christmas reading, a small play in your uh, 
family bubble, uh, let us know. Contact myself or Laura Breen, and we are going to put together this uh, Christmas concert. We're choir members. We're hoping to have you sing your parts individually, videotape it, and then put it together like we did with the Choral Camp concert. Um, so uh, if you would like to do something, come and talk to me or to Laura Breen about that, and we're going to make that work. Also, the Ringling Grandmas, or just Ringling Ladies, uh, I think this year they're suggesting they don't have to be grandmas, but anyone who would like to do some bell ringing, uh, Laura has up to 16 bells, and she's trying to figure out a way to do this physically distanced with neat Christmas masks, um, and dress up in Christmas decorations, and that you could perform it, and we would videotape it, maybe spread out around the Christmas decorated church, so that we had three or four cameras facing on each part, or each section, and you would ring your bells, and then we would edit it all together, so that uh, everyone could see the Christmas bells ringing. So, uh, if you'd like to be a part of that, also talk to Laura Breen about that. One other announcement. Uh, this coming Wednesday is Remembrance Day. Now, my understanding is that with COVID-19, they do not want to risk people spreading that disease or, or, or crowding together at the Cenotaph. So, they're encouraging people to... They're only going to have a very few representative, by invitation only, laying wreaths there so you can go by the cenotaph afterwards and see the wreaths but in the meantime they are hoping that uh, people would watch the national cenotaph service from Ottawa on their televisions okay I believe that's all of the announcements so let's sit back and worship God today Let us go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come into your presence in worship here today, and we seek first your kingdom and you, because you promise us that if we do put you first, you will give us everything else that we need. And so, and so today, Lord, we and our whole world need you and your present help in a very deep way. From dealing with everything from the virus to the upcoming isolation as we head into winter. As we try to figure out how to celebrate your coming to us in Christmas and Advent in different and safe ways. Lord, at a time and in a day when so many people seem to want to reject you and be masters of their own fate and captain of their own destinies, you call us to be disciples who follow you and seek first you and your kingdom. Please, Lord, walk with us so that we might with your power and help and forgiveness reflect your kind of love that lays down our lives in service to you and our neighbors and this is the season of remembrance with remembrance day coming up how we also remember those soldiers who laid down their lives in service to us 
Lord, help us to remember them and their sacrifice at this time of year in a different and a safe way. Meanwhile, God, we thank you for the blessings you have given us. A great and successful turkey supper. My son Ryan's continued recovery from his uh, aplastic anemia. The harvest coming off so well this year. And that in conversations with students, they're finding school working better than they expected. For all of these things and so many other blessings, we give you thanks and praise, our Lord Jesus Christ. And yet, despite your blessings, we humans are so much tending towards the sin of seeking our own will and our own ways over you and your ways. So please, Lord, forgive us for trying to be that which we are not, trying to play your role of God rather than play our role of disciples. Lord, we know that this kind, when we don't be who we are created to be, it leads to anxiety and fear. And so forgive us for this. And for any other sins that come to our hearts and minds that we lift to you now in our silent prayers of confession. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for your forgiveness. Help us to continue to change and grow and follow your calling and show and tell the world around us that you and your ways are more blessed and that we reduce anxiety and fear by putting our trust in you. We ask this in Jesus' strong name. Amen. from 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 27. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. Dear children, this is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not really belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But their going, their going showed that none of them belonged to us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and all of you know the truth. I do not write to you because you do not know the truth, 
but because you do know it, and because you no lie comes from the truth. Who is the liar? Is it whoever de denies that Jesus is Christ? S such a person is the Antichrist, denying the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever acknowledges the Son has the Father also. As for you, see that, see that what you have heard from the beginning remains in you. If it does, you also will remain in the Son and in the Father. And, that, or, and this is what he promised us, eternal life. I am writing these things to you about those who are trying to lead you astray. As for you, the anointing you received from him remains in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things, and as his anointing is real, no, not counterfeit, just as it has been taught you, remain in him. Our psalm today is taken from Psalm 118, verses 10 to 16. All the nations surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord I cut them down. They surrounded me on every side, but in the name of the Lord I cut them down. They swarmed around me like bees, but they were consumed as quickly as burning thorns. In the name of the Lord I cut them down. I was pushed back and about to fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my, def my defense. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things.
So this week, with Remembrance Day, I want to have a story time, a children's time. And this coming Wednesday is November 11th. And what are we supposed to remember? We're supposed to remember those soldiers who served and who some who died protecting us and our freedom. And you know, whenever I think about this time of year, I always think about what Jesus says in, in uh, John's Gospel, where he says, Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You know what? It is ultimately love that allows us to lay down our lives in service to other people. And so I want us to think about some people who've done that. Can we name or think of or remember people who've served in our armed forces and some who died? Or even remember some who currently do serve in our armed forces? Here, on the screen, you're going to see a picture of Howard Metherell. Howard was married to my dad's first cousin, but uh, his wife had lived with my grandparents and my dad, so she was like a big sister to my dad. And Howard, when he was overseas, was in the Royal Canadian Air Force. He was in general duties, which mean, meant he did whatever they needed him to do, from refueling aircraft, to delivering messages, to driving generals around, to driving ambulance. And a drive ambulance he did after D-Day in Normandy, France. He was one of those people that went in after the fact to kind of clean up after D-Day. And Howard would tell us stories, and I always thought about the sacrifice he made to be there and to do a very difficult and hard job. And I know that in our churches we had other people who have served, who most of who have passed away, but as we remember them, let's also remember that there are people who are currently serving. Here's a picture. Andrew Havis. He grew up here at Hope and in, the, in our area. He is now serving with the Canadian Armed Forces as an engineer. Now, people are still laying down their lives in service today. And so I want you to think, who serves you? Who does things for you? Is it your mom or your dad as they cook meals, drive you places, uh, do your laundry, or help you learn how to do your laundry, or help you learn how to cook your meals, or help you to learn how to clean up after meals? They're laying down their lives for you. And then, if they do that for you, and Jesus says this is how we have great love by laying down our lives, this greater love, how could you serve? Could you serve by willingly wiping down the table after meals, picking up your dishes, washing them, putting them in the sink, putting them in the dishwasher? Could you help make sure all your dirty clothes get into the laundry hamper? And as you get older, could you also help by doing the laundry, folding clothes, bringing the laundry baskets up after they're out of the dryer? You see... What makes us great in God's kingdom are being people who serve. So I want each of us to think about how we can serve and thank God for the people who have served us. From soldiers right down to our parents, even our friends and our other family. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for laying down your life for us on the cross. For the soldiers who have served us and for the others closer who have lovingly served us by laying down their lives in service, we give you thanks and praise. Help us to grow in a similar kind of greater love, a loving service, as we sacrifice some of our time to care and serve others. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Let us hear from God's Word as we've read scriptures. Let's hear His message to us today. Let's pray. God, as we look into the scriptures and seek to apply them to our lives, help us to know and follow you as disciples and try not to be little gods of our own lives. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Back when I was growing up, we as a family were attending the international plowing match and there was a booth selling framed Bible verses. For some reason, my parents bought some Bible verses and put them on the walls of all of our bedrooms. And in our case with my brothers and I, over top of the beds in our one room that we shared, each of us got our own verse. Today, my verse that was got, bought back then so many years ago is still on my bedroom wall. And it has come to shape my own personal mission statement for my life. And the verse is Matthew 6.33. In the old King James Version, it reads on my wall, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. My personal mission statement that came out of this verse and some other uh, verses that became important to me is to help people meet and follow Jesus Christ. And so I have tried to live my life and make decisions about what to do, and in some cases what not to do, with the limited time, money, and resources that we all have. I ask the question, is this seeking God's kingdom? Am I trying to build my own kingdom if I do this? Does this help people around me meet and follow Jesus or not? And I tell you this not to suggest that, look at me, aren't I great? I tell you this because we love what we love and what we value shapes how we live and how we treat people around us. This is the Sunday before Remembrance Day. When we remember the soldiers that laid down their lives for their God, their country, and their neighbors. And their sacrifice is something to behold. It is amazing what they did. And whenever I contemplate this sacrifice, I can only think of Jesus' words. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. So just as Jesus laid down his life for us on the cross... And the soldiers have been willing to serve and even die to protect us. The only way such behavior makes sense is out of love. Many of us in our two churches have had family members dealing with serious illnesses. And as we love our sick loved ones, laying down our lives for them means comforting them, driving them to appointments, sacrificing our time to visit them. And... Normally, we don't even think that this time that we sacrifice or give to them is a sacrifice. Why? Well, because we love them. We want to help them. So today, I want us to think about who and what we love in light of what John tells his readers that we should and should not love. So to begin, we read in verse 15 of chapter 2, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So we are warned not to love the world or anything in it. But what does that mean? You know, I grew up at a little church back in Putnam, United Church, and our youth Sunday school class was discussing this one time, about what did it mean or not mean to love the world. And one friend of mine asked the question, well, does that mean we can't love good food, beautiful music, or beautiful art? or the beauty of a sunset, because that's in this world? And it was decided, no, those things were gifts from God. We can love them, but we can't love them more than we love God or our neighbors. It's a matter of proportion. Our ultimate first love needs to be the Lord and following His instructions, which means we love God. And if we seek first His kingdom, He'll give us all those other good things that we need. So as John goes on to clarify, for everything in the world, the cravings of sinful man, 
the lust of his eyes, the boasting of what he has and does, comes not from the Father, but from this world. The world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever. Do we love this world and store up for ourselves treasures here? Loving the best house, the best food, the best vehicles, phones and computers? Or do we use our homes, our food, our vehicles, our phones and computers as tools to love God and our neighbors? In other words, what John meant by this world is the cravings of sinful people, the lust of our eyes, and the boasting of what we have done and what we have. In other words, it's selfish, self-centered living. Look at me! Look how good I am! I'm wonderful, aren't I? And if I want it, I will get it. This selfish, self-centeredness is what John is telling us that we need to reject, to get out of our lives. Because if I am the center of everything, then it's impossible for me to love another person and impossible for me to even consider laying down my life for another person, sacrificially. One of the reasons I think we're seeing so much stress and anxiety in young people today is that they're trying to live in such a way that they think will make them happy. But the problem is we human beings are not designed to be self-fulfilling. Let, let me explain. What if we were created to be disciples rather than master of our fate? So it's only when we love and serve God and our neighbors, and in doing that, that happiness and joy slip in as a byproduct. You see, the best way to reduce stress and anxiety is to take our eyes off of ourselves, look to God our Creator, discover what gifts, talents, and abilities we have, find how we're to called to use them, and care for others. Care for others by what? If we're a farmer, feeding the world. If we are in the construction trade or an electrician, to build and repair buildings. If it's teaching, to teach in the next generation on how to live and love and serve. If it's caring for the sick in the medical fields, it's putting their needs first and caring for them. You know, the older I get, the more I see that if we try to define ourselves and put ourselves in the center of our lives, the more we try to live for pleasures and comforts in this world, the more anxiety and stress and fear that grows in our hearts and minds. John knows from Jesus that we will find more abundant lives when we stop making ourselves the center and follow Jesus and lay down our lives for those around us. And in so doing, we'll do what? Store up for ourselves treasures in heaven that will last forever. As Jesus puts it in Matthew chapter 10, verses 39. Whoever finds his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Now, secondly, John goes on to warn us that there will be people who love this world and their own desires more than they love Jesus and his teachings. Interestingly, John calls them antichrists, or people against Christ. As we read, dear children... This is the last hour, as you have heard, that the Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrists have come. And this is how we know it is the last hour. They will go out from us, and they will not really belong to us. Who are these people? Well, John goes on to explain in verse 21, I do not write to you because you do not know the truth, but because you do know it, and because no lie comes from the truth. Who is the liar? It is the man who denies that Jesus is the Christ, or the Messiah. Such a man is an antichrist. He denies the Father and the Son. So we're living in a time when more and more people think they know better than Jesus and our Heavenly Father on how to live. Simply put, an antichrist is anyone who denies Jesus and his teachings and his revelation about God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So yes, we have many antichrists running around in the world today. And many have chosen to leave Jesus and his church and gone out from us. 
Now, to be clear, this does not make them horrible, evil people, but they are resisting Jesus. And I think John was trying to help his readers then and us today that realize that no one, while well, no one likes conflict, but we do need to be okay and expect that people who live and love this world will have different ideas, different ways of living, and different values than those of us who follow Jesus. It is at this point that we need to remember how Jesus taught us to treat people we disagree with. We get to love them. Even people who would see themselves as our enemies, we get to love them. And well, with compassion, seek their good, not their destruction. The only way we, as God's people, can find the strength to be different from this world and to love the people of this world that seek is for us to seek first God's kingdom. It only comes from loving Jesus more than anything or anything anyone else. And if it feels like it's difficult, you're right, it is. While I was off over the last couple of weeks, I heard an interview on a podcast with rap rapper Kanye West. He's a very interesting dude. He's been diagnosed with bipolar, and most recently he was running for the U.S. presidency. Because, in his words, he believed God told him to do this. He has, by his own claim, come back to the Christian faith of his childhood. And it was kind of weird hearing him talk about Jesus and his faith on a secular podcast. But in amongst all the stuff that he said, and he certainly is fairly manic at times, he said something that got my attention I have not been able to forget. He said this, When I fear the Lord, all the other fears that I'm filled with fall away. But if I don't fear the Lord, everything and everyone scares me. Now think about that. The idea is that if we trust in God, revealed in Jesus and in his plans and in his power and his ability to lead us, then we will have the help of the Holy Spirit and all that divine power and resources we need to face the life with its very real trials and troubles. Whether it's by direct inner strength that God gives us or arranging certain things or certain people to be there at the right time and the right place to help us get through, we will get through. And you know, over the last few years, whether it was Ryan's aplastic anemia, COVID-19, or the challenges of trying to lead two congregations in a time when it seems like more and more people want to love this world and everything in it more than they want to love their Creator who loves them and has great plans for their lives, if I did not believe that God had a plan and a way through all of this, and he was walking right here beside me, I'd be so stressed out and filled with anxiety, I'd be paralyzed with fear. But, when I fear the Lord, and I trust in the Lord, all the other fears fall away. But if I don't fear the Lord, everything scares me. Made so much sense to me when Kanye West said that in that, pod in that podcast. So rather than be... Paralyzed with fear, notice what John goes on to write. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and all of you know the truth. This anointing comes from God, it comes upon all believers, not just those of us who might be leaders. So guess what? We are not alone. God is with us, now thanks be to God, for we have this divine help to help us turn from loving this world to loving God who laid down his life for us in Jesus. And somehow, mysteriously, we are transformed and changed and begin to live and love in a way that reflects God's kind of love if we're willing to trust in and follow Jesus. So, do we need and want the Lord God to love and help us walk through life? Absolutely. So let us remain then in Christ who, according to John 15, is the vine, and we are the branches. And what's the promise? If we remain in him and he in us, we will produce fruit, fruit that will last, but if we don't remain in him, we can't produce any spiritual fruit at all. Again, what did we read this morning? 
No one who denies the Son has the Father, and whoever acknowledges the Son has the Father also. See to it, see that what you have heard from the beginning remains in you, and if it does, you will remain in the Son and in the Father. And this is what he has promised us, even eternal life. Simply put, in a time when sin tempts us to want to be captain of our fate or master of our own destiny, we are called to be disciples. And rather than deny Jesus and listen to and to obey what we want to do, the secret to finding meaning and purpose in life is to depend upon the very power and direction of Jesus Christ and his and God's power somehow mysteriously flowing through us and anointing us to give us the resources we need to be his people. Now I know, so do I know the ways that God's going to lead us? I have no idea. Will I know that we'll end up in God's eternal kingdom eventually? Yes. But I don't know how we're going to get from here to there. But I do know the one who will walk with us and lead us along that way. And that can reduce our fear and help us have a reason to trust and have faith. So in conclusion, let us not love this world because loving this world leads to anxiety and fear. But if we love God and seek first his eternal kingdom, then we can resist the temptations to be like so many others who resist Jesus and make themselves into antichrists. Let us instead follow the Jesus who empowers us to love and love deeply and lay down our lives, even as soldiers have done in the past. And so, Lord, help us to hear and follow you and love you and your ways more than this world. And listen to John's closing thoughts. I am writing these things to you about those who are trying to lead you astray. As for you, the anointing you received from him remains in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things, and as that anointing is real and not counterfeit, just as it was taught to you, remain in him. So let's remain in Christ Jesus in the presence of God the Father, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. And let's pray. Please, Lord, let us pay attention to whom and what we love. Help us to not get caught up in loving this world, but love you and your kingdom. Help us to resist the temptations to be like so many antichrists who resist you and your teachings and do what they want, when they want, and make themselves the center of their lives. Such selfishness will only lead to anxiety and fear. Lord, it is when we fear and trust in you that all other fears fall away. So please walk with us through the paths you have for us in this sinful, challenging world. And as we remain in you and you in us, we will produce fruit, fruit that will last for eternity. We ask that this would all happen in your name, Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit, to the glory of God the Father. Amen.
Let us go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, as we gather here before you, seeking you and your help, as we face a world today that is in need of your help, we first pray about this virus that is steadily having about a thousand cases come this winter, as winter comes. We pray for those who are going to be feeling isolated in the dark time of the year, and we pray that you would help people through that. Help us also to find ways to celebrate this coming Advent and Christmas season. And remind us and the people around us that we do not face all of this alone, but with your real help. God, we also pray for our American neighbors to the south as they struggle through a presidential election, which is so close and is causing such mistrust at the, so that any irregularity is causing to be questioned and wondered if there is cheating going on. Lord, they are a nation divided by much more than just mere politics. So protect them from violence, from bad actors who might try to take advantage of the situation, and help them to gather, figure out how to rediscover their common uh, heritage, their common goals, and their common values. We also pray for our own nation. As you protect their democratic freedoms, we pray for our democratic freedoms to be protected here. Bless our nation and its soldiers. God, as there have been soldiers who have served in the past, be with them and their families, those who are currently serving. Protect our soldiers. And as we remember the sacrifices people have made in laying down their lives, be with those who are living with such sacrifices, whether they are wounded in body, soul, and mind. Be with their families. Bless the work of the Royal Canadian Legion as they seek to help support veterans who are dealing with some challenges. And Lord, as people are asked not to come to the Cenotaph this year, help us to still remember safely at home. Bless our community and our government leaders in this strange year with your wisdom and grace. And I know that while most of the cases aren't growing as much in our county, we are up to about six or so cases. So continue to bless and protect our schools that they can safely and effectively keep on teaching our children. We also pray for those who are stressed out and worried for all kinds of reasons. Lord, help them to find peace and help in you. And we continue to pray for the ministries of our two churches, especially as we figure out how to continue Christian education with our Sunday schools, kids clubs and youth groups, and Bible study, and as we continue to figure out how to celebrate Christmas. God, we thank you for the online Bible studies and youth group meetings that are happening. The youth group were able to go to the corn maze last week. We continue to pray for those who are also dealing with health problems. And many of them may be feeling a lot more isolated than normally. So we pray for Frank and Blossom, Lisa and Nancy, who are all dealing with cancer in various ways. We continue to pray for Bill, who is in hospital. I understand that he is regaining some of his strength, but he's still got a long ways to go. So we pray for him. We pray for Jim, who got home from hospital after a long time. And we pray that you would help him to continue to gain strength and get more mobile. We also continue to pray for my son Ryan as his new bone marrow is making most all of his blood cells. As the two, uh, as the new uh, donation and his body help them to make friends with each other so that he will get over the graft versus host disease that he's dealing with. Meanwhile God we continue to pray for all those who are mourning loved ones. Help them to hand their loved ones over to your merciful eternal care and to mourn in a unique way even as normal funerals are not allowed with this virus. And so we at Hope pray for the family of Reg Castle who passed away last Sunday. As Reg trusted in you, Lord, take him home to be in your eternal kingdom with Marion, his wife, and so many others that he has known and shared life with together. Finally, God, for our concerns that weigh heavy here upon our hearts that have not yet been mentioned, we lift them to you now in silent prayer. Lord, hear our prayers.
Lord Jesus Christ. Hear and answer according to your will, power, and might, we ask in Jesus' name, by the power of the Holy Spirit, to the glory of God the Father. As we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.